Lots to talk about here today. Monday, Observer Live. Now free on YouTube every Monday. Noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. Join the chat, everybody. Got a lot of people on there talking about uh, CM Punk and Impact. Because, in fact, CM Punk was uh, at, I believe, just the tapings on Sunday. Might have been both days, but I think just the uh, Sunday tapings. And, uh, and he was there. And for some reason, I mean, prior to Bound for Glory, I don't know what it was, but there were a lot of people thinking that he was going to show up at Bound for Glory, like he was going to sign with Impact and, and show up at Bound for Glory. I don't know where that started, but uh, he did not. He did not sign with Impact and show up at Bound for Glory. But he did, like, show up backstage on, on Sunday. And uh, I have no inside information, but... I do not think this dude's going to TNA. I don't want to say that there's no chance, but I would be very, very, very surprised because, you know, they're not going to pay him $3 million or whatever. And, I mean, the one the one way that I could see him going to, to impact is if in his head it's like, well, you know, maybe WWE doesn't want me because of uh, my reputation... After my AEW run, so I'll go to Impact and I'll, uh, you know, show them that I can be a team player or whatever and not get in a fight and maybe after that. But I don't think that's happening. I don't, th- I don't think he's going to Impact. I don't think he's doing anything in wrestling. I think that he's just, uh, he's out of the game. So anything is possible in this business, as we learned on Saturday when they rebranded to TNA Wrestling. But I do not think that that's, uh, that's likely. What if, what's his name, Leonard Asper, whoever owns Anthem, what if they give him, you know, they can't sell him the company. Well, I guess they could sell him the company. But what if they give him total control and say, Scott Demore, whoever else is here, we brought in Ace Steel already as a producer. You know, you already know Punk, you know Lance Storm, you know... Uh, Lou D'Angeli, you know this person, you know that person, people that work here, they know you, you know them. We could use some attention right now. Yes, we're only on Access TV, but we're trying to build things up. We're changing things. You get to have the creative on this thing. We can't pay you a ton, but you got free reign. Do what you well, want to do Well, that's the problem right Saturday there. We can't nights. pay you a ton. Well, hold on now. They are a large company that owns television stations and such. They could come up with the money in theory. Now, I know they've been doing a lot of cost-cutting and things like that recently. So, okay. But if you wanted to, you could find the money for this guy. They find the money to keep the lights on every week and do tapings, don't they? So if they wanted to really make a splash out of this... Why not go ahead and give him that amount of creative control and he can be on there when he wants to? Well, you see, this is a TV business and these people know TV and they should know enough to look at the TV numbers and see that what? Listen, when he left, it was like, oh, well, you know, if if nothing else, he really moved those numbers on collision and we still get collision numbers. And it's not like, you know, it's not like this thing collapsed. It's not like other main events not involving CM Punk. That Brian Danielson and, um, what was a Danielson match uh, last week? Andrade? Uh, No, the one last week, the one prior. uh, uh, The main event. Whatever. Anyway, did a great number. Did a great number for the final uh, quarter of the show. So, I mean... Yeah, but what are what are we way. bringing in here? Like, how is this really good? It, like, the, it, when he first comes in, you could run a big building and they would do very well. But a month down the road, three months down the road, it's not going to be. Yeah, Christian, that uh, that Brian Danielson Christian match, yeah. they did a great quarter. So you know, there's there's no evidence that he is a long term mover. Okay, he's a short term mover, but you know, you can't pay a short term mover three million dollars you can't afford. To come in and, and do whatever. So. Well, one, obviously it wouldn't be $3 million if you gave him, again, this would have to be some sort of agreement where he is essentially taking over the creative, doing whatever he wanted to do on Collision, he'll get to do here. And he doesn't make as much money, but the difference is 
percentage wise and body wise and attention wise, he would be a large mover. You would have to think at least initially and maybe for a little longer than initially, if he were to go over to impact and do that, I mean, their ratings, let's just be honest, are relatively minuscule. Now they would get the amount of attention that they would get may be beneficial to them. And if they're doing wholesale changes and they're trying to make this thing more than what it is, look, they're obviously doing rebranding back to TNA for whatever reason. I don't know if that ties in with the, the, you know, the streaming channel, which is the TNA classics channel and all that stuff that they have. I have no idea what they're doing, but I mean, I think punk could have a lot more impact literally in impact than what you're saying when it comes to the TV ratings on Saturday, that you're right. You're absolutely right about that. It does. He did not make a much of a difference, you know, a afterwards, but I think with impact again, if he had everything in his control, I, I don't know. I, it, that All I is know a is I, interesting I, than... I was around in 2010 and 2011 and impact brought in Hulk Hogan and they had sting and they had, you know, and for the first week it did great that first week. And then it was just all back to normal again. Yeah, but you know what? They brought in Kurt Angle, and they had something with Samoa Joe that for like three pay-per-views did do it was actually two. really well. Two pay-per-views. And the problem was they could never get out of their own way. And in theory, they may not be able to get out of their own way now. But if they are looking at what they have, the guns are going to be around for a while. You got Josh Alexander, you got Steve Macklin, you got, I mean, they have talent there and they have connections with other companies. It's not like, again, a lot of investment would have to happen here. And I don't think any of this is actually going to come true, but if they brought punk in and they actually threw some money behind some things just to lock up enough of a core of people, they might be able to build into something hot because what's hot on the indie scene right now, other than, you know, AEW and everything, everything is spread really thin. GCW is not as hot as they were. For as big as Defy is, it's big for one night, and especially regionally, it's got more legs. But most of the shows that take place... They're only big for one night, and once the weekend's over with, and once everybody gets done with the GIF, I mean, that's it. So there is a hole to punch through a little bit. ROH isn't doing it as that product, so you never know. I know. It's not going to happen. It ain't going to happen, it's but not still. Happen. Try, try to put a silver lining on things here. WWE is celebrating Veterans Day free ticket offer open to all U.S. military veterans. WWE announced with a valid veteran's ID, all veterans will be able to receive a free live event ticket during the month of November. The offer had previously been open only to active duty members, but now it's any veteran. Hopper's valid for one complimentary ticket. WWE wrote, we are proud to support our nation's military service members and veterans. And have always offered active duty servicemen the opportunity to see a show as our guest. Celebration of Veterans Day this November... WWE extending the complimentary ticket offering to all veterans with a valid veteran ID. So uh, check the internet to see where they're coming to town, I think they said. Find an, find an upcoming event, and then you can go and check it out. You have Max Caster on Wednesday was giving MGF unwelcome physical groping. Daddy Ass has calling himself Mr. Ass for decades now. And then you have the Iron Savages. All these men want to do in their own words, is eat their opponent's asses. Yeah. Anthony Bones is the straightest guy in this match. Tony Storm also ate ass. What's going on here? Sky Blue has a very... Um, Thick. Thank you. Uh, backside, of course, Tony's the same way. So they had to one-up that somehow. Kira Hogan, well, she fits the bill. Kira is running wild, and Tony cuts her off by eating her ass this is the kinkiest wrestling show i've seen in a long long time hey guys did you love this clip if so you should join our channel just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do wrestling observer live wrestling observer radio the brian and Vinny show all of them in full hd full length plus archives of all of your favorite shows click join today and don't miss out